education through labor camp for one year, where I was subjected to all kinds of torture and ill treatment. On the 19th of July 2000, I went to Beijing to protest against the Communist Party of China, where I was arrested and sent to the Jiaquanti Detention Center in Hubei province for detention. The Jiaquanti Detention Center hoisted me up in a mine cage while I was interrogated. They pulled up my hair, slapped my face, and put stomach tube in me for a long period of time, which was extremely painful. They kept me hanging for eight days and eight nights in an almost unconscious state. On the 21st of June 2003, I was arrested by the Criminal Investigation Department of Harbin City. On that day, the State Security Brigade of the Municipal Bureau tortured me, shaking me, beating me with electric buttons, pouring horseradish and mustard oil on me. It was not until three o'clock in the middle of the night that I was sent to the second detention center in Harbin City. In May 2004, I was sent to Heilongjiang Women's Prison in the Women's Prison. They kept me in a small cell for one and a half years. During that time, I was handcuffed, chained to the floor, had my mouth taped shut, and was beaten and abused by prisoners and guards. I went on hunger strike, many times out of protest. They then brutally force-fed me, leaving blood all over the pacing slabs. Afterwards, they sent me to a section of the prison for solitary confinement and instructed four inmates to guard me. They tied me up with straps for a long time and they threw me into the concrete floor. On the 8th of March, I started a hunger strike to protest against the persecution and demanded to be released without charge. They put boiling water and salt water on me until I passed out. In November 2012, they sent me to the sick ward to be tortured, where I was guarded by mentally ill patients. When the psychiatric patients lost their minds, they beat me wildly, and at the captain's instruction, they would keep me in handcuffs for a long time. They also tied my legs with plastic tape for more than a month. During that time, I was unable to lie down, to rest, wash myself, change my clothes or walk, and had to be helped to go to the bathroom. I went on a hunger strike for more than six years and three months, and when I was released from prison on 20th of June 2014, I weighed less than 30 kilograms. Over the years, I know of many other Dafa disciples who have been persecuted to death by the CCP. Some of them were government officials and university lecturers, but they lost their lives because they believed in truthfulness, compassion and forbearance. They told people the truth and helped to stop the persecution, yet they lost their lives. So I won't go into details here. I hope that the people in the international community will recognize the evil of the CCP, stay away from it and abandon its evil ideas. Please help and support DAFA practitioners to enter persecution as soon as possible. Thank you everyone. Thank you, Ms. Hu, for sharing your story with us. Today, vandaag hebben we ook iemand van Amnesty International bij ons. En zij zal een verklaring afleggen namens Amnesty. Ze heet Joyce Mann. Goedemiddag allemaal. Fijn dat jullie er zijn. Mijn naam is Joyce Mann. Ik ben beleidsmedewerker in China bij Amnesty International Nederland. Dit jaar vieren wij het 75 jaar bestaan.